you know, I wasn't going to talk about this. Well, actually, I was going to talk about it. I'm lying. <laughs> I was going to wait to do it on my other podcast channel, but this is DJ Wolf. Um, I wanted to talk about uh, Messi, Tina, uh, Nose Lawson, where the hell her name is. Anyway, I was watching a YouTube video, a couple of YouTube videos was talking about her. And I knew it was been going on for about a week because uh, the new uh, season of uh, Own's Oprah Channel, Own, uh, premiered the new season of uh, Black Love. Now, here's the irony. The show is called Black Love, right? But this heifer, and I'm going to use that lightly because I was going to call it something else. This heifer... Uh, Gets on this program with her husband, actor Richard Lawson, um, who's been in the business a very long time, longer than she's been, longer than her husband's been in the business. Matter of fact, for longer than her former husband's been in the business, and uh, she basically uh, did one of the things I've talked about for a while: the mood that black women get when they when they kind of feel in their oats a little bit and they kind of sniff themselves, she did exactly what I was talking about. She sit, sat there, started grandstanding about, boasting about herself, gave no thought about her husband at all, her current husband, you know, uh, Richard at all. She just, just threw him under the bus and just basically just told everybody uh, and, and completely emasculated him. Just told everybody in a nutshell, he ain't about shit. He don't mean really mean nothing to her. You know, or like she the shit, and he ain't nothing. You know, uh, it's all over YouTube if you really want to get a further explanation of what the hell she's talking about. But uh, I just had to bring up my, my two cents on it because I'm like, and I'm watching it, and I'm actually watching it on a couple other channels right now that I'm currently watching it on. And she totally just emasculated the brother. Now, and then she going to say, oh, well, uh, this 59-year-old woman who is actually now 64... Uh, you know, <laughs> by all published reports. Um, and he's 70, 71 years old. Give the man his props. Give him, give him his, his respect. This is my thing. Give him his fucking respect. You know, because he earned it. This is a guy who's been in the business longer than you, your daughter, and your ex-husband has been in the business. He started out his career way back. According to my son, he's been in the business since the early 70s. I didn't even realize that. He's been in a number of films and television shows and stuff like that. You know? I remember knowing him from the 1980s in the soap operas. That's where I know him from, but I didn't know he had been in the business longer than that. You know? But nevertheless, um, you need to give that brother his respect. Because he really is due his respect, so to speak. You know, and I don't think it's fair to sit there and disrespect him like that for any real reason at all. You know, because uh, frankly, this is me on it, on this uh, take on it. Frankly, he earned his respect as a Hollywood heavyweight, you know. Because he is, as far as I'm concerned, whether you think he is or not. But to sit there and talk about, and you know, think about it. The show was called Black Love, okay? She's supposed to be on there talking about her and her relationship with Richard uh, Lawson. Instead, she's sitting there pontificating about Tina knows relationship with Tina. Now, that's a problem. And I talked about this before in numerous podcasts about how black women will put their needs and desires before everything else. In the previous podcast, I just talked, I just got into something about that uh, not that long ago. I think about a week ago. So, you know, and up jumped this crazy fool in this video boasting about me, 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 I, 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 I. You know? Just talking about it. Just talking about it. And I gotta be damned. 
Here's this woman who's 64 years old, who's claiming she's still a hottie. I mean, she's not a bad woman, don't get me wrong. I would, you know, personally, if I wasn't married, and she wasn't, I probably would go there. But she's 30, I mean, not 30, I'm sorry. She's, uh, she's 64 years old, okay? And for her to sit there and throw that brother under the bus was really complete bullshit. Did I say complete bullshit? It was complete bullshit. It really was. She had no right to do that. You know, they've both been married before. They both have, uh, you know, multiple children from previous uh, marriages. And uh, my thing is that if you're about black love, be about black love. Talk about your relationship that you got with him. But, and somebody pointed out, uh, and it's true, if you watch another video with uh, one of the members of New Edition with his wife, there was nothing but the look of love between them. If you watch the video with Tina Knowles and Richard Lawson, there's a look of uh, disdain, disgust, and separation between them two. And it's obvious as I don't know what. That's what makes it so bad. So obvious. It's like uh, they just didn't even want to be in the same room. And it shows. It really shows. And I'm like, really? Yeah. That's exactly how they look. And I was like, wow. Really? Really? Wow. It was crazy. And uh, she uh, was talking about, you know, I got my car, got my house, and, and I got my man. She put him in the back burner. He was the third thing that she was more, more, the most concerned about. He was the third thing on the list. The third and the last thing on the list that she was more concerned about. It was just like, oh, yeah, you know, her possessions came before her own husband. You know what I'm going to say. That's fucked up. She put her fucking possessions before her own husband. Her husband was a third wheel in her list of what's important to her. Yes, she did. And then she said, on top of that, well, you know, my husband's not perfect. And, and you know, he could, you could hear him in the background grunting. When she was listening to possessions off of he just the third wheel. And he realized that. The bad part about it was that he realized that. And then when she said, well, my husband ain't perfect. And he was like, oh, really? Oh, he's like, oh, yeah? Yeah, she sure did. What a total bitch. Yes, Tina No, you are a bitch. And I don't give a fuck if you hear me saying it or not. You're a bitch. Okay? You sit there just like many African American women in this Me Too movement day age. And don't get me wrong. Like I said before in many other podcasts and videos, I stand with the Me Too movement on one thing. That no man has a right to touch you. Uh let me put it like this. No man has a right to put their hands on you if you don't authorize it. Okay? No man. And I agree with that. But, but, there is a but. Okay? But, if you're in a relationship with a guy, and you're on a show called Black Love, and you're talking about, well, girls, this is how you do it. You get you that house, that car, and that husband then your, prior, your priorities are fucked up. They're very fucked up. Because you put that man in the back burner. And they're talking about, well, he, my husband ain't perfect. Now, you put put him in a, in a, in a priority, and then you're going to talk about he ain't perfect. Like everything else in your life was perfect but him. Like everything in your, else in your, right, uh, in your life was right but him. He's the only one that had God together. My house is together. My car is together. 
But my husband just ain't right. He ain't up. He ain't up to stand with the rest of them. Of everything else that I possess. And speaking of that, she talks about him like as though he was a possession. That's the problem. Okay? Black women today, they treat the relationships of the men as a prized possession. They say we do it. I don't know too many black men who do that. I'm be honest. I really don't. I know old school guys who do, but I don't know if the guys they do that. And I ain't saying that there aren't any guys that don't do that, because I know there are. But I personally don't know of any. But they do exist. But my thing over there is, you go on the show called Black Love. And they, and they put you on the show, I'm assuming, put you on the show with the intention to address the fact that y'all have a strong relationship. You know? A strong, nurturing, caring, compassionate relationship. That's what I thought the whole show was about. I'm not, I'll be honest with you. I've never actually watched the show per se. Now I'm glad I didn't because maybe a lot of it's bullshit. And somebody else on YouTube, another YouTuber was saying, maybe Oprah had already knew that was some bullshit with that relationship and that's why they presented it on there. And that very well could be true. But to sit there and present that kind of uh, thing publicly, especially to impressionable women, in this Me Too movement, is complete bullshit. I'm sorry. It's bullshit. I had to call it out. I wish I saw this video a couple of days earlier so I could actually uh, post it. Um, but like I said, it's complete bullshit. It's complete bullshit. And now I think about it, the whole uh, OWN network really was certain shows in particular. Uh, this show and... Uh, Iyanla's Fix My Life. And like I said, uh, I told you guys, I actually ran to Iyanla out here. Um, she got property out of this way. So that's, and that's no shocker either. Everybody know it. You know, she, uh, Oprah was there out, out this way a few years ago. And I joke with my, both my wife and my son over the week. I said, hell, she could have just came right up the road and did the same thing for us. Because they ain't like that Iyanla ain't, ain't making no cash flow out here. You know? She could have did the house herself based on what Oprah did. I, I, I still haven't seen that episode. I'm going to look it up and try to find, find it. You know? And yeah, she could have just came up about a couple of miles and did my house. Shit. You know? <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God. You know? But my thing is, the own channel, they, it's really geared towards women. It ain't, it ain't geared for, you know, the only reason I even watch the own network is because of a couple of shows. Uh... One of them, I don't know why I still watch it because it's some garbage and it's in season two now, which is uh, The Pains. But I'm a little fan of the, of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the cast members and the acting on the show. It's the script that I have a problem with. That's another story. Um, in the Have, Have Nots, Love You Is Wrong, another great show. You know, so there's a few shows on there I really do like. Sweetie Pies, unfortunately, um, off the air after about six, seven seasons. I forgot how many seasons it's been on, but it's been on for a while. They had a lot of, a lot of tragedies on that show, uh, particularly uh, Miss Robbie losing her grandson to get the gun violence and the violence that was going on in St. Louis. Um, my fact, just outside with my family, I got family down there too, but not far from where they where they're at. But anyway, y'all. Uh, but beyond that, I would never watch on. I would never watch on. The own channel some garbage to me. I'm, and, I'm, and I don't have a problem saying it outside of that. Outside of the few sh good shows that are actually on the network. That's real talk. Yep. A handful of those shows are some bullshit. I can honestly say that wholeheartedly because I watch the network. You know. And I know some of you are doing Yeah, I know exactly what I'm talking about. Trust me on that. Um, But... Here's the thing. It's the same pattern that these black women raise their daughters, granddaughters, and nieces on for decades that you don't need no man to find your happiness. If you do have a man to find your happiness, you put those priorities in order first before you decide whether you want to be happy with that man or not. That's the mentality. 
Tell me I'm lying about it, brothers. Tell me I'm lying about it, some of y'all sisters. Y'all know it's the truth. You know? And I'm not talking out of turn. This is what I know. This is what I've seen firsthand. How black women are. Towards men. Especially when the black men are treating them good. I'm telling you. Y'all like to pull that kind of shit. All the time. Did I say all the time? All the time. You know? So it, it, I'm not talking out of turn about this. Not in the least. I wish I was, but I'm not. You know? Y'all got a long history, sisters, of pulling that kind of mess embarrassing men. I've had women do it to me before. You know? Embarrass me for virtually, really, for no reason. You know? Just to stroke their own fucking ego. You know? Because they kind of feel like, well, you know, I need to put myself out there to let people know I'm the shit instead of him being the shit. That in itself is wrong. This is why y'all don't have good relationships. Because you get a good man or you get a guy who out there who has potential to love you and love you good. And I don't mean like let's necessarily love make him. I'm talking about, you know, love you for who you are based on their feelings towards you and you towards them. You know, but y'all ruin it. A lot of y'all ruin it. By letting your ego get stroked more than it needs to be. Trust me, I know I've seen it happen way too many times. Way too many times. And y'all play the same bullshit all the time. Nothing new. Nothing new at all. But then you don't want nobody to call it out. That's the other thing that tripped me out. You know, y'all like to, you know, to get your ego stroked. But as soon as somebody called you out about something that you did that was fucked up, then you have her issue. I'll give you another example. I watched Hill's Kitchen. Uh, I just saw it the other night. I mean, actually, last night. But one of the contestants, Jen. She's a sister on there who was messing up, got behind in her, uh, you know, one of the dinner services. Uh, and, of course, everybody on both teams saw it. She was fucking up bad. And Gordon Ramsay, who has restaurants all over the world, I know a two he has in Vegas personally because I've been by a boat. Well, I've been to one. And another one, it was next door to the Bellagio where I stayed. So I know it's for a fact. Okay? He ha has about a dozen or so television series. All of them have been very successful, both here and England. I've seen both versions of uh, Kitchen Nightmares, both here in England. All right? He was, you know, Hell's Kitchen here has been on, what, 18 years? They just celebrated, I think, the 17th to 18th season. Okay? He's noted. He's well known. Master Chef has been on for like six years or something like that. And still going strong on Fox. They just ended their season a couple of days uh, a couple of weeks ago. Alright? So he knows what he's talking about. So of course he calls her out. And she goes on trying to blame him. Talking about he he had to sabotage her. She actually said that. I'm like, really? He don't have to sabotage anybody. This guy's been in the business for a little Shit, deck about, about what almost 30 years now? Who the fuck he why would he, and you and you really seriously think he was gonna sabotage your ass? You know, this is how stupid she is. This is how stupid some of these sisters are. I mean, real talk. She thinking that, oh, I'm the shit and you just messing me up. Yeah. Kind of like what uh <laughs> well, what's the name's mom with this thing about, oh yeah, you know, blah blah blah. Uh I'm out here and, you know, you, you know, I, it's just, it's just, I just shake my head. I literally shake my head, you know, because she thinks she this shit, you know, this is that ego stroke, you know, Ramsey had to check that bitch. He should have checked her because she was wrong all day, wrong all day. He had to kick her out and she still was arguing even when she was out the door. It made no sense to me at all. No sense. Because she ain't got none. She was incompetent. And truthfully, I don't know why the fuck they call her ass back. I'll be honest with you. I don't know why they call her back onto the show. I really should have did a separate podcast about that. But I don't really have to because this is 
the ego tripping that is uh, black females today. Let's be real about that. You know, they don't never want to be wrong about anything, no matter how wrong they can be. They can't take constructive prison well. That you're going to boast yourself up about something to do uh, that has nothing to do with your relationship at all. You get on a show called Black Love, and the last thing you talk about is about your struggles with your relationship between y'all two. You talking about you made it all about you and what you did to get to where you at instead of the relationship in itself. You, your husband was just like the third wheel of the relationship. He wasn't even part of he was He wasn't of the relationship. He was just a small part of what you want in life. And that's basically what you boasted about what you wanted and not about the relationship. You know, just like Jen with Gordon Ramsay boasted about she was being sabotaged because she didn't know what the fuck she was doing as a fucking chef. She clearly didn't know. She was fucking up bad. And she blamed Gordon Ramsay talking about, oh, you was trying to sabotage. I say, really, bitch? Ain't nobody trying to sabotage your sorry ass. You just don't know the fuck you know. And that was clear as a bell. You know? This, this is one of the things that disdain me, that I have a disdain for when it comes to a black woman. And I said, and hey, don't get me wrong, I know what they don't. All right? I don't have a problem with most black women no way. To be honest, I don't. I, I truly, truly don't. I don't have a problem with y'all. That's why I stay in my distance. If I stay in my distance, I don't have a problem with y'all. And then you got some of y'all out here, and this is also a known fact. Some of y'all black women think because you got multiple kids you're taking care of by yourself that you, oh, you are a very strong woman because you're taking own kids care of them kids by yourself. That's because you don't want no man. People done got into your heads talking about, oh, you don't need no man. You can do this on your own, girl. It ain't that hard. You know? <laughs> yeah, it is hard. And I know somebody personally who was dealing with that. And it's very hard on them. They just don't want to admit it. But by the same token, they don't try to get the baby's fathers to get involved in the taking, caring, and feeding of the children. They don't. <clears throat> because they don't put the kids first. They put the relationship before the kids. And I've seen that. That's the number one problem. That's why you got kids that can't relate to the, to the dads or the moms because the moms put the relationship before the kids. See, there's a pecking order, okay? If you have kids that you have to take care of, the kids are the priority along with the relationship. But the kids have to come first, okay? And that's whether you with that man or not, or woman or not, okay? And if you want to establish a relationship, that's another story. But if you guys aren't together, that kid, the kids are always a priority. Always. That's the whole point, you guys getting together and doing a, a, a joint custody and stuff like that because the kids have to be first, okay? But a lot of times, the men or mother and father who are separated or no longer together in the relationship can't put the relationship aside for the sake of taking care of the kids, you know? And that's why a lot of, and that's another reason why a lot of these, and it's a fact, why a lot of single mothers don't, be bothered with the baby's daddies, which is ridiculous. If, you know, you, you have to understand, your priority is the children at that point. If y'all ain't together anymore, your priority is definitely the children. Even if you are together, but definitely if you're not together. But Fatina knows to the, the, the talk about and encouraging women to make their priority about their possessions. Yeah. Before anything else. That's irresponsible and completely ignorant and she's a total fucking bitch. And I mean that. I meant what I said. Did I say she was a total bitch? Yes, she is. No wonder Matthew had to, a nose had to get rid of her ass. I don't blame him. Fuck the bullshit. But you know what? I give him credit for one credit is due. He kept his daughter a priority. No matter what. Think about it. Meanwhile, Tina putting everything else as a priority over love and relationships. And these, she's the same type of woman who always talks about, I can't find no good man. They hard to find. 
No. The only thing in a good man you're trying to find is what he, what he can offer you, what he can give you as far as possessions, not love. Not the comfort of a, of a man being in your arms. You ain't looking for that. The average woman today ain't really looking for that. I'm finding that out more and more and more. They're not. They're looking for a man who can actually monetarily take care of them. And don't say not all because there's a lot of y'all. And I know personally of women like that. Personally. Not just younger women either, but older women too. <laughs> don't get me started with that, but I'm going to tell you right now. That's the number one problem that black women, uh, uh, that I have with black women, is that they put possessions over love. But then you'll say, well, you know, I put, put my heart for this man, he broke my heart. That's because you're dealing with the wrong type of guys. That's the other problem. Y'all don't look for the, guy, the guys who like the simpler things in life. Y'all look for the guys with the flash in the pan. Look at Steve Harvey with his wife. You think she'd be marrying some regular guy? No. And it's been rumored that the guy she was married to before wasn't a regular guy either. You know? But that's another whole story. But the thing of it is, though, that women like Steve Harvey's wife, and I think ex-wife too, they like the guy with big spenders. That's all they want. They think that's what makes them happy. Is, is things. Not people. And they, there goes the way of uh, the average black woman today. Because a lot of them are like that. A lot of them are like that. And I've seen it more and more and more. Not only from what I've seen for myself uh, in old relationships, but I've seen it in guys in relationships with women now. Even the younger guys. It's, it's crazy. You know, there's one guy I talked to. Uh, he was with this chick, and the chick had a kid. And the first thing she said was uh, she was looking to get herself a house. Never mentioned again. Not once. She said she was looking to get a house. And the guy wasn't even included. So that goes to show you. She already wrote him off before, before, beforehand because she had no intention of including him in her plans. Period. It speaks for itself. This is DJ Wolf. I got more to say about this in a live podcast. Uh, coming out real soon. This is DJ Wolf, and I am out.